Hi friends, here we are, chapter three of Junie B. Jones is a graduation girl. Yesterday she got sent to the principal's office for saying roses are red, violets are blue, graduation is here, and your feet smell like stink. So now we're on chapter three called A Good Chuckle. The office is where principal lives. I know my way there by heart. There's a typing lady there too. She looked over the counter at me. Well, 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 would you look who it is, she said. I looked down at myself. Well, 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 it looks like me, I said kind of quiet. The typing lady pointed at the blue chair. The blue chair is where bad kids sit. Only I'm not even a bad, but I still have to sit there sometimes. I put my feet on the edge of the chair and I hid my face in my knees. If you don't hide your face, people can recognize yourself. Finally, I peeked one eye at principal's door and guess what? That guy was looking right back at me. Is that Junie B. Jones I see out there, he said. <gasps> I did a gasp, because Principal can even recognize me from one eyeball, apparently. I went into his office, and I sat in the big wood chair. Principal winked at me. I'm a little bit surprised to see you, Junie B., he said. You haven't been sent here for quite some time. I nodded. I know, I said. That's because my behavior has shown considerable improvement. I pronounced the words very perfect. My teacher printed those words on my report card, I said. And guess what else showed improvement? My speaking, that's what. Because I don't say run did anymore, and I don't say think did, and I don't say throw did. Do you want to hear me say them right, huh? Do you, principal? I took a big breath. Ran, 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 thought, 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 through, 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 I said. I smiled very proud. See, I told you, Mother says I am getting a better vocabulary, I said. Vocabulary, said Principal. Whatever, I said. Principal smiled. Yes, well, I'm delighted with your improvements, Junie B, he said. But if everything has gotten better, then why are you here? I wiggled in my chair, very uncomfortable. Because it wasn't my fault, that's why. What wasn't your fault, asked said Principal. I wiggled some more. Then finally, I told Principal about how my teacher made us write a graduation poem and how she said the last word had to rhyme with blue. And so Polly Allen Puffer rhymed the word P-U, I said. But then Mrs. got very mad at him because she did not appreciate his behavior, young man. Only too bad for me because my brain thought of an even sillier poem and my mouth couldn't hold it inside. Principal closed his eyes and took some deep breaths. All right, let's hear it. I gulped very worried. Then I made my voice real small. Roses are red, violets are blue, graduation is here, and your feet smell like stink, I said. After that, Principal kept his eyes closed a real long time, and he did not say any words. Then, very slow, he put his head down on his desk, and he started to laugh. His laughing got louder and louder, and so guess what? Then I started laughing too. Oh, that poem was a beaut, right, Principal? We are having ourselves a good chuckle over this, aren't we? Principal stopped laughing very fast. He raised his head again. Oh, no, Junie B, no. We are not having a good chuckle, he said. I'm sorry. Your poem caught me completely by surprise. But I never should have laughed like that. He crossed his arms at me. You are right about one thing, though, he said. Your poem is definitely silly. But silly things are not always appropriate to say in the classroom, are they? Your teacher made it clear that she didn't like what Polly Allen had said, Junie B. But you called out your poem anyway. He made squinty eyes. And please don't blame this on your mouth, okay? You know you could have held it inside. I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know, I said kind of quiet. Maybe I could have. Principal tapped his fingers on his desk. It's a very serious matter to disobey a teacher, Junie B, he said, and I want you to sit here and think about just how serious it is. Can you do that, please? Yes, I said. I can. After that, I squeezed my eyes real tight, and I thought and thought. Finally, I opened my eyes again. Good news, I said. I've said my last stink. Principal nodded his head. That is good news, he said. 
Then he stood up and he held my hand and we walked into the hall. It's been an interesting year getting to know you, Junie B. Jones, he said. You're a fascinating little girl. Thank you, I said. You're fascinating too. After that, both of us waved goodbye and I started skipping back to room nine. Then all of a sudden I stopped and I spun around. Yeah, only we're not saying goodbye forever, right, Principal? Right? Because next year I will, I will get set down here too, probably. Or else maybe you and I will see each other in the playground, right? Principal did a chuckle. Right, he said. Hooray, I said. Hooray, hooray. Then I turned back around and I skipped to room nine my fastest. Because maybe if I hurried, I could still sprinkle glitter on something. Chapter four is called Cats and Gowns. I skipped in the door of room nine. Then my whole face got happy. Because guess who was talking to my teacher? It was Gus Filoni, that's who. And Gus Filoni is my favorite janitor. I zoomed right over to that guy. Gus Filoni, Gus Filoni, it is a joy to see you, I said. And so what brings you here anyway? Gus Filoni patted my head. I had an important, important delivery to make, sis, he said. Just then my bestest friend named Lucille came running up to me. She pointed to a big stack of boxes. It's cats and gowns, Junie B, she shouted. Gus Filoni brought us cats and gowns. She twirled me all around. I heard him talking to the teacher. The cats and gowns are right there in those boxes. Everyone is getting one for graduation, she said. Oh, I jumped up and down at that wonderful news because who doesn't love cats? That's what I would like to know. Cats and gowns, I hollered. Cats and gowns, hollered room nine. Mrs. sat down in her chair real slow. Then Gus Filoni patted her shoulder and he said the word, good luck. Mrs. said for room nine to please stop shouting. I'm sorry, boys and girls, but Lucille did not hear me correctly, she said. No one in room nine is getting a cat and gown for graduation. Room nine did a loud groan. Aww. Then what are we getting exactly, I asked. Caps and gowns, said Mrs. You're getting a cap and gown for graduation, not cat and gown. No, 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 said Lucille. I heard you say cat, teacher. I know I did. I know I did. Mrs. said for Lucille to hush. Then she passed out the boxes to all the children. I looked inside my box, real curious. Then I kept looking and looking because something was not right in there. Uh, my cap got run over by a truck, I think, I said. It's a big square flat, so. Mrs. laughed. Then she came to my table and she unfolded my cap and she put it right on my head. Hey, what do you know? It fits, I said. After that, all of us put on our caps and gowns and we skipped all around the room. Only not Lucille, because she was still pretty upset about the cat issue, of course. Pretty soon the bell rang, was going to ring, and so Mrs. made us put our outfits back in our boxes. I'm going to let you take these home with you today, she said, but please do not play with them on the bus. And don't play with them at home either. These caps and gowns are white, okay? And white material gets soiled very easily. I know it, Mrs. I said, I know white material gets soiled easily because one time my grandpa Miller spilled pop on his new white tie and you can still see pop splots on that thing. Mrs. looked and looked at me. Then she sat back down on her at her desk and she waited for the bell to ring. Tomorrow's chapter starts off called A Million Bucks. See you tomorrow.